We are in the middle of an exciting shift in our lifestyles. Our life is being shaped by the connected nature of all the devices that we are carrying around with us and that we interact with. I will discuss the opportunities for my vantage point that comes with this on how this future is calling for innovation and opportunities in system on chip design. And having been in this industry for about 25 years, I can only say the pace of change will keep accelerating. So let me advance that slide and speak a little bit about this, give you some background what we are observing. A few years back, we didn't even have tablets. And now they are pervasive, they are almost everywhere. That industry, all together with smartphones and phones, continues to grow more than 20% average year by year. But beyond this, in itself, it is changing. More than 50% we expect to be in different market segments, value segments, entry segments, or even ultra low cost segments. Now what we also see is, next generation of radio technology is coming and it is accelerating. Fourth generation of that is coming into the market. As we speak, we are moving towards advanced LTE already. All those devices that we use, they draw data, they produce data, and that consumes so much of these precious air resources that we have to continuously keep innovating on how can we bring even more information over the ether. So this is amazing to see. But let me also take a different look at this. And let's see on how we use those devices. We use those devices, multiple of them actually, and a generation and an age of multiple ownership is rising. We are counting households that have not only one PC and one tablet in the living room, have two or three, have four. And this all together leaves us experiencing now that refresh rates are going down to one and a half year. Imagine what that means. One and a half year we refresh those gadgets. Why? because all of you bring so much innovation to this that after one and a half year we feel compelled to get our hands the next better user experience. With those devices which started with phones then became smartphones, moved on to tablets, also the marketplace has changed. In phones it was very much about operators and service providers now with the tablets and the other gadgets coming to that market, it becomes also more and more different business models. We have brick and mortar retail, we have internet retail, and this all spins and sparks new business models. A lot of innovation is happening, not only in the technical space, also around business cases. We continue to watch and look at the statistics on how the number of applications grow. It seems they are mushrooming. And at the same time, if we dig a little bit deeper, we figure out the complexity of the apps is also growing. High-end apps have the complexity of full programs five, ten years back. And let me come to the next thing what is also happening and this is we see amazingly new usages. With, a, with a, just an attachment $5,200 to a tablet, a tablet can be converted into an ultrasound or we can shoot feature films with it. Can you imagine what that means? B doing a kind of a universal studio, small universal studio movie on a tablet or having ultrasound exactly where it needs to be, not hundreds of miles away in a hospital, rather at the fingertips of the doctors exactly where it needs to be at the patients. This, these are only a few examples. 
And in five years from now, we will be looking back and say, oh my God, what kind of new applications, what kind of new deployments did we invent within that short period of time? And this is driven by all our behavior. Very soon, it will not be only any more 26 hours a week that we are exactly using this very device. It will be more. And if I look at my son, I think it is 26 hours a day that he is on that gadget. But this is a perfect segue into what that is. The teenage generation is actually growing up in an all mobile world. They are not used to Ethernet cables. They are not used to big power supplies. They are used to be mobile. They are used to have everything what they want and everything what they need on that device. It is always there. And they are used to that they can send a message to everybody on that planet within four seconds. And they are used to that this, the answer comes back in another four seconds, plus the typing time. This will change the world. This innovation will continue to be the spine of our industry. It will just be about knowing us. This technology knows us. It knows how to get me there where I want to go. It helps me finding things. It helps me managing my money. It helps us managing our health. Look at the variables coming up, counting on how mobile, how agile we are, the steps that we take, and push us to do even another staircase and not take the elevator. It, they entertain us. We can also grow relationships with this. Gives us opportunities on retaining, cherishing relationships that we didn't have before. And for many, it is even the vehicle to earn money, an integral part of making money, earning a living. So this complex thing is created by you. And I want to take a little example on how a very simple topic is actually very, very complex. So let me look at the most popular animal on the internet. How such a simple act of taking a photo of a cat and posting it, what it means, what all has to play together and what plays together. So we take our smartphone, we hold it and the accelerometers make sure the picture is upright, what, however we hold it. The GPS part of it records the location. The camera converts the optical signals into electrical signals, renders it already in the single processing. The image is delivered towards the CPU, the CPU puts it onto the display, we put, uh, push the touch screen, the picture is taken, it runs through all the rendering algorithms, contrast is managed, color is managed, even it makes us smile if you want. And then we put it into error protection, redundancy, put it and modulate it on the, on, the, on the electromagnetic waves and put it through the ether to the inner beast. And at that end, the same thing goes on. Taking off the modulation, making corrections for the errors that happen on its way, put it into the fiber backbone, bring it to the servers and post it there. Attach, if necessary, copyrights to this, authenticates it, uploads it, and then it's there. But it's still not yet on your device. If you want to watch it, then you have, it has to go all the way back down. And I think it is worthwhile to take a breath and all of you to be proud on being able to manage such a complexity for even sometimes very simple acts. So, how does that work? Everything starts, semiconductor industry, with transistors. 
process technology, delivering the next technical, the next technology node every one and a half to two years. Crank this thing forward. The so many times so belie that believed Lewis, uh, Moore's law. We continue to push this forward. And then it's your wisdom, it's your sophistication to take those transistors and do all kind of funny stuff with this. You do RF amplification with this. You build digital to analog to digital converters and vice versa. Some others of your colleagues build ultra capable video and display rendering capabilities out of this. I have seen your rewards here speaking about noise and managing the noise of this. So what you can all do with these transistors that at the beginning all start to be pretty much the same and in the end serve totally different purposes on one single die. It's about your design capabilities to make that happen. To put this all together, it's your architectural capabilities to architect it in a way that it becomes a highly cost-effective and highly effective design. You architect the right software hardware split. You architect the right part of what goes into acceleration. You architect the right A to D converter for this particular purpose. You architect the software to be modular. And what for all of this? To deliver the user experience that we at the beginning designed and decided what we want to deliver. We want to deliver a great user experience and what brings this all together? Your magic. You know the magic on making all that happen. Take the billions of transistors, have them doing all the dedicated person, very diverse uh, uh, job, very diverse jobs in order to deliver this user experience which makes you, when you walk out of this here, buy the next gadget because you want to get your hands around this. And as an example, I dive a little bit into a mobile platform. Starting with CPUs, one or two or four or how many you may want to have on this. We put a gorgeous imaging processor next to it. And then the other transistors are designed to be delivering stunning graphics processing. And the next ones we use for communication technology, fast communication technology, connectivity to multiple devices, so to speak, a multi-connectivity. We add all the other capabilities we need. We want to hear something, audio. IOs, display technology. And last but not least, very important, two pieces. A sophisticated power management that helps to keep the power consumption under control. To manage this ultra complex design to use the lowest possible energy. And finally, the secret source of having a security in it. Putting an anchor point for a platform and usage security into the silicon. Make sure that this platform, neither the hardware nor the software, can be tempered. So that is not the end of the story. What unleashes all of that? That is software. Uh, effective software design with algorithms that can unleash the capabilities that have been designed into that SOC in order to deliver the user experience that we planned at the beginning for to deliver. That makes this all happen and you have the sophistication to pull this all off and to balance that in an optimal way that in the end, all the parameters of experience, power consumption, weight, battery, lifetime, fits into an optimum. So we could argue, great, we've done our job. Yes, 
you have done a great job. This industry has done a great job. But we all know, when we go return to our offices tomorrow, there are still a number of challenges. Not everything is solved. There are a lot of challenges ahead of us. And I want to take this opportunity to convince all of us that these challenges are opportunities. We are all engineers and an engineer feels compelled by a challenge. The harder the challenge, the sweeter the victory after surmounting it. The higher the mountain, the more we feel compelled, we must surmount it. So I would like to draw our attention to the opportunities which are in this. And I want to walk through a few of those opportunities. Opportunities for fun, opportunities for creating a differentiation, opportunities for pushing the envelope of our capabilities again, opportunities to create the next big thing. The next big thing, I think it's worthwhile to understand that we are on a journey. I mentioned the mobile platform. This is just an instantiation. That is just what I'm talking about today. We are on a journey towards the Internet of Things. The all-pervasive, immersive Internet. Going into billions and connecting billions and billions of devices. And we are just on that journey. In 2014, speaking about phones and tablets and moving to variables, move that on. It's a trajectory on which we are. And this trajectory will come to life, will be accelerated by your capabilities. All our capabilities to build ultra low cost, for example. If we want to reach the next billion or another 10 billion of devices, we all know what the secret sauce to that is. This industry has done this now for 25 years. Every time when we manage to get the power consumption down by a factor of 10, that get the compute performance up by a factor of 10, we get the cost down by a factor of 10 and we can ship 10 times as many units. This is the anchor point of it. And we will do this together again. We again will push the power consumption down by a factor of 10. We will bring 10 times more compute and we will get the cost down by a factor of 10. And we will again open up a new generation for us, which is 10 times as many units. And with this, eventually we will build this Internet of Things. High density, that is the other end to it. We want to deliver performance. All those transistors that deliver the performance, wherever you design them for, for video, for graphics, for display driving, that all needs to get onto one chip. The, den the more dense we get them, the easier it will become. And at the same time, we know what that means. More transistors, they all need fuel, which is current, milliamps in our case. We have to design and we want to design that at a ultra low power level. Who would ever imagine that we would buy the next gadget has more performance but just half of the battery lifetime? We wouldn't accept that. We would rather strive for at least the same, get more for the same. So ultra low power capabilities will be a differentiation and opportunity for this industry. And if I think about what was on the news in the last few weeks in the northern part of America, the ultra deep temperatures, we may not even think about leaving our smartphone tablet in the car and it gets cold there. No, Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine communication means those devices will be out there in this hostile environment all the time. They have to be able to sustain that vibration, radiation, temperature. And a big opportunity to bring the innovation power, which is in all of us, 
and make a differentiation here. And I spoke about the gadgets. We want that to be small. We want to have a high integration of it, which means we have to bring such heterogeneous parts like an RF transceiver or an audio amplifier and the compute all together. Mix signal designers. Hey guys, you are the linchpin of this. You have it in your hands to make a differentiation to pick up those challenges. Well, let me go to the other extreme, high temperatures. In a car, we all know the temperatures that a dashboard can go to. But for in vehicle in, in infotainment, for example, we need to have those circuits to withstand this. But imagine we even would want to go into the engine management, do a knocking control circuit that has to withstand temperatures 100 degrees Celsius and even more. A lot of challenges where we can make a differentiation about. And that brings me back to the other part. If I want to design a device for a car that needs to last for 10, 20 years, or even think of Internet of Things, gas uh, meters, and so on and so forth. While on the other hand, I spoke before about one and a half year refresh rate. So trading this off on which device needs what kind of resilience, which device needs to have what kind of endurance. A lot of opportunities for differentiating. Internet of Things, did you ever think we would connect them with a CAT6 cable? I think nobody had that somehow in the mind when I spoke about that. They connect first. They all have an RF. They all have RF capabilities. They start with connecting. Once they are connected, they compute. And then they receive or give information. This gives us a wonderful opportunity to turn to our next challenge, our next big thing that we have to manage. Coexistence of all of this. Take, for example, our smartphone picking up the airways of LTE, having my Bluetooth earset, connecting at the same time. At the same time, my PC is tethering a data stream also through the same device. My watch and my other sensors are also connected to this. Do we want to make any compromise on of any of them? Do we want the Bluetooth headset to stop functioning when our watch is counting our steps? For sure not. We expect this to deliver a gorgeous audio, at the same time a big data throughput to my PC, and at the same time picking up the even smallest signal from the airwave because the base station is so far away. This coexistence situation needs the best brains to pick up this challenge and turn it into an opportunity. And that last one, and then I stop with this, that sums it all up. We want to have that in an ultra small footprint. Imagining that this goes into a bracelet or even smaller devices, footprint is all about. It's all about then getting it into a footprint that we can enable even smaller form factors, that we can put it even in even more unthinkable places to make this Internet of Things happen. So I would like to only take one additional slide, one thing, and that is I want to highlight to you that you all together with your capabilities that you are sharing here on that conference are changing the world. You are giving people opportunities they never had before. You can be part of yourself. And I want you leave, to leave you with one promise. Intel will be with you, pushing this envelope 
delivering the capabilities and the innovations that you need in order to make a big living out of this, having fun with the technology and creating the next wave of connected devices. Thank you.